All right, welcome. So what we're going to do in this case is we are going to find the perimeter of our triangle. Now remember, the perimeter is going to be the sum of all the lengths for our triangle. So the perimeter is going to equal the length xy plus yz plus zx. Okay, so it's going to be the sum of all of those lengths. So that means we need to find um, all the lengths. Now to find the lengths, when we have points on a coordinate grid, if it's not immediately available like what those are, and actually I just like to figure out the points anyways, um, let's go ahead and write down what these points are. So this point is going to be x is going to be negative 1, negative 2. Uh, z here is going to be at 2, negative 3. Okay, and then y is going to be at 1, 2, 3, 4, so that's going to be 4, comma 1. Okay. Now, when you're finding the distance um, of these side lengths, there's a couple things, a couple ways you could go about this. One way is you could just create triangles, right? Draw your triangles and go ahead and find the hypotenuse using the hypotenuse or the distance um, using the Pythagorean theorem. The other way is you could also use the just distance formula, just plugging in the points. And I think when you go ahead and plug in the points. Um, you know, either way, it doesn't really matter. Let's go and do one for each one, and you guys can kind of decide what you like better. So let's do xz, because again, we need to add all of these up anyways. So if I want to find xz, then I basically know via the Pythagorean theorem, leg squared plus leg squared equals my hypotenuse squared. So again, if you recall, what we did was if we have leg squared plus leg squared equals the hypotenuse squared, well, if I need to find the hypotenuse, which is the distance, then that's just going to be the square root of leg squared plus leg squared equals hypotenuse. Okay, which again is, represents the distance. So let's go and do that. So this length, we can just count since it's on a coordinate grid. We can say from there to there. And again, the, the, the issue here is it doesn't really matter, but since your leg is being squared, we're just looking for the absolute value distance. You're just counting. You could say that's going to be a distance of 1. You go from negative 1 to... I'm sorry, negative 1 to negative 2. So negative 2 to negative 3, yeah. So you want a distance of 1. And it doesn't matter if you use positive or negative, because it's going to be squared, so it's going to be positive. Plus, you, how far do we go from negative 1 to negative to positive 2? I did have that right. Negative 1 to positive 2, you can just count. 1, 2, 3, plus 3. All right, um, so that's going to equal the square root of 10. All right. So sometimes it's easy to count, and sometimes like you can quickly count it. Other times, like it just might be easier to do the distance formula. And if you remember the distance formula, we're doing the same thing, but rather than counting, you can also just find the difference between the horizontal and the vertical lengths. Because when you find the distance between those lengths, that gives you how far something is. So that'd be y2 minus y1, quine squared. Okay. So now, here's the important thing. Like, which one is your x2, y2? Which one is your y1, x1? It doesn't matter again, because it's either going to give you a positive or a negative value, and the value gets squared. So what I like to do is I like to always have z be first and then y. So this is going to be my x1, y1, and this would be my y2, x2. So again, you're subtracting your, um, so if you're going to go from z to x, you subtract y, or z to y. If you're going to go from z to y, you subtract here from there. So again, it's x2 minus x1. So I'll just write it out for this first one, and then I will do the same thing, but I'll do it quicker. So 4 minus 2, quantity squared, plus 1 minus a negative 3. Notice my use of parentheses. Okay? It's minus a negative 3. So 4 minus 2 is 2. 2 squared is 4. And 1 minus a negative 3 is 4. 4 squared is going to be 16. And therefore, that's going to equal the square root of 20, which you could go ahead and simplify to give you. Um, we could go ahead and further simplify that to give you a 2 radical 5. All right, and then the last one, let's just do uh, x, x, no, let's do y, x. All right, so if I want to find the distance here, again, I'm going to do the same thing, but I'm just going to kind of do this in my head now. 4 minus a negative 1 is going to be 5. And then here, I have 1 minus a negative 2, which is going to be 3. So the better you, the faster you get at this, the easier it's going to be become. But again, you've got to be careful with these negatives. That's why this is helpful to write it out, so you don't make those mistakes with the negatives. 
Um, and therefore, you have 5 squared is 25 plus 3 squared is 9. So that's going to equal the square root of 34. And that one we cannot simplify, so we'll just leave it as that. And then we are not done, though. I almost got it. Remember, guys, we're finding the perimeter. The perimeter is the sum of all the sides. OK? So the perimeter, and I'm going to leave it as an expression because I don't have a calculator with me, so that's OK. Hopefully, you guys can check my work. Um, we have xy, which is square root of 10, plus yz, or zy, doesn't matter, is 2 square root of 5, or you could just do square root of 20, and plus xyx is going to be square root of 34. Okay. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That is how you find the perimeter um, of a triangle using the distance formula and Pythagorean theorem. Cheers.